Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here yet, my name's Scala and I do film reviews and vlogs every now and then. Not very good at sticking to a schedule, so don't expect one. <laughs> Well, I've got to start by saying Happy New Year. It's the end of January, start of February. I hope everyone's had a good start to 2019, or as we say, 20 by teen. It's been a while. I think the last video I uploaded must have been like mid-November because of Klexicon. I have a lot of news because it's been such a long time, which is a bit bad, so I do apologise that it's been a while. We'll start by saying I am officially going to Klexicon Las Vegas. I really look forward to it, me and my friend Victoria. Sadly, uh, we were supposed to go with this girl called Erin. It's really sad tier for Erin. But yeah, it'll be me and Victoria going and we're gonna spend a bit of time in LA and then we're gonna go over to Las Vegas, do the convention, come back. So that should be really fun. It was really spare of the moment spontaneous, but I'm so glad I'm doing it now. So I'm really looking forward to that. I spoke about having like a web series coming out last year. We are officially in heavy pre-production stage to get a Kickstarter going soon. We're a bit held back because of university and like having time to organize it but we need we are making sure that we get the kickstarter done before Klexicon because we have some special surprises involved with it if you want to help donate and then hopefully we'll be shooting in august so yeah that is exciting i'm also still in uni so still doing film stuff i've just produced a documentary which is really cool and i'm actually pitching a film tomorrow that i hope to direct if it isn't if it doesn't get green lit i don't mind i'll just spend a bit more time on it you know film it another time but i hope it does fingers crossed because i would love to do it so anyway let's get started with what this video is about welcome to my the favorite review so i saw the favorite about four weeks ago i think and it was a very good film very good film there's a few things that i was a bit hmm about well mainly one thing which we'll discuss later on but it was an exceptionally amazing film and if Olivia Coleman wasn't in it, if she wasn't Queen Anne, then I wouldn't have found it half as interesting. Sorry Emma Stone and Rachel Wise, you know, you guys were outstanding, but Olivia Coleman is Queen Anne, I need to clarify that. So the summary of the film for you guys that haven't watched it, it's about Queen Anne's reign. She doesn't have a lot of history out there, people don't really know about Queen Anne. She was the queen that reigned after Mary Queen of Scots, which is funny, it's got Mary Queen of Scots out at the minute, so go watch that, I will soon. And it's just about her and her life and a secret love triangle that goes on. Now, the true story is, is that she, they found letters with her to another woman, so we assume that she's queer, but the whole idea of the love story with uh, her maid and her, I don't know what to call her, side woman, I don't know, honorary maid, I'm not sure, but that was never like part of history, that's just part of the film, uh, but there was something there with Queen Anne, we just don't know. So this story is like a love triangle between the Queen, her, her service woman, and her service woman's cousin, who is Emma Stone. So throughout the film, Emma, who, let me get their names up, I can't just call them by their names, call them by their names. Hope you get that pun. Emma Stone plays Abigail, Rachel Wise plays Lady Sarah. Okay, let me try and remember that. So, Abigail is Lady Sarah's cousin and she didn't get lucky with her side of the family and was like pretty much in the pit of the trenches whilst Lady Sarah was serving the Queen. Uh, she managed to, Abigail managed to make her way up and get the Queen's attention and using the fact that the Queen is queer with Lady Sarah to work her way into the system, the royalty system and live a life of luxury. Whether she she truly loved or even liked Queen Anne is questionable. You could tell there was something real between Lady Sarah and the Queen. However, Abigail was a bit of 
a bitch and got up there for her own sake and you can see that at the end because there's a really sad bit with a bunny rabbit and many people would laugh at the bit with the bunny rabbit um i might as well say it now because if you're watching this then you should see the film basically uh lady sarah is cast away and abigail has replaced her position and whilst the queen is ill in bed she sees abigail tread on one of her rabbits because she thinks it's funny and although people may find it humorous that the queen got so upset by that because you follow the queen's story and how her childlike manners are you know that that's her turning point it's like she was so blindsided by everything else that happened it's that moment with the bunny rabbit that she realizes she fucked up and abigail's actually a really mean person um so yeah it's quite interesting there now let's go into the characters a bit more so the queen olivia coleman no one else could have played her at all it was hilarious so so humorous i could sit and listen to her as queen Anne cry for hours it would just bring me to tears of laughter every time it's outstanding i think yeah she's been nominated for an oscar i really 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 hope she's in the run for it but to be honest that's a bit of a biased opinion because i haven't seen all of the other films that are up for the run so you know can't judge too much so i mean i can keep going on about olivia coleman i'm not going to you need to go watch the film to understand how funny it is rachel wise played lady sarah really well it's like she was she wasn't an antagonist but because of the love triangle it's like you could choose who you liked if you wanted abigail to be pursued by the queen or if you wanted it to be lady sarah and for a bit i wanted abigail to but then i kind of realized that Nah, Rachel Wise is the go-to gal for that sort of thing. She really is. And she had a better relationship with the Queen. I think it just worked out better, probably with the age as well. Um, because Abigail's quite young and no I thought it was played really well it was very mature she was professional you could tell that everything she did was for the best of the queen uh it completely contrasts to Abigail who did everything for herself she was manipulative she was cunning witty charismatic and in the end you knew she was the antagonist you knew she was just doing everything for her own benefit and not the queen's so it was really interesting how although they both had that they still had that challenge against each other to get the queen's attention it they were completely on different ends of the spectrum personality wise and the queen was just like oblivious to it how whatever you didn't even know how she was going to react sometimes there was a moment where a band was playing happy music outside and she just starts shouting at them to stop for no reason which was really funny so directing the shots beautiful people didn't like the fish eye now i love the fish eye i thought it was really clever and it actually makes sense i listened to the director talk about it and he mentioned that when you look at paintings back from i think it's the 1700s 1800s when queen anne ruled a lot of them were painted in a fish eye effect so he was actually mimicking art from that century so technically historically it made sense that he filmed it slightly wide angled i thought it went really well in the film the film was very obscure it wasn't a linear structure it well it was a linear structure but the story the narrative was just odd in itself the characters were odd it was quite jarring at moments because of queen anne and her personality and the style of the film itself so having that really did fit and it gave it a scene there was a shot of the cart going with abigail in it going to the house and then one with abigail leaving at the end and i love the mirrored effect of that it brought it together as like a circular narrative and yeah like although the ending wasn't resolved um you know i thought it was really nice to see the way that she came in is the way she came out you knew what was going to happen to abigail after treading on the bunny and queen anne realizing the truth cinematography that worked perfectly with it as well the colorist that was very good the warm colors the contrast makeup did amazing the 
famous scene where she says she looked like she looks like a badger is so humorous and her makeup matches it of course and I thought all well, that was funny the one thing I didn't like and this is a bit of like a personal problem I have I just I, for some reason I don't like Nicholas Hot Hot I think that's his surname Holt I don't know but I just don't like him I'm not that keen nothing personal I guess it is personal I know I don't know I'm just not that keen on him I don't think he's the best actor although he's British I feel like he's American sort of mimicking a British actor even though he's not which is odd but I wasn't that keen on him in the film I felt like that casting could have been changed uh, he didn't really bring anything to the role I think that's why I felt like more could have been brought to that role and I guess the last thing to discuss is the controversial ending a lot of people when the, the uh, credits came on just looked at each other and was like what what is going on it kind of it just ended with the the queen removed abigail and then you knew that it was going to be the beginning of the war so you didn't know if lady sarah was going to return you didn't know if abigail was going to return the queen had clearly had a stroke so was she going to die was she going to have any kids we didn't know but i think you were supposed to like interpret it for yourself so i saw it that Abigail never returned, she got banished for good, and Lady Sarah returned. I think she would have returned. There was this whole thing with a letter and Abigail like trying to hide the fact that Lady Sarah was trying to contact her, and something about banishing Lady Sarah for good and the Queen not knowing where she was, but I'm pretty sure at the end she would have brought Lady Sarah back because she needed her. She wouldn't have gone with any other maid. The sad thing about the fact that the, re the resolution felt unresolved is that if you actually look at the history of Queen Anne on the internet there's not a lot about the end of her reign like I spent a lot of time looking for who the next ruling king or queen was and I didn't know and I know there are books out there that probably say it but she had no children so you didn't know what to think I'm pretty sure it was like a Spanish king or queen that took over in the end <sighs> that could be complete bull no that is bull because queen elizabeth's related to her i don't know but there's not a lot of history about it so the fact that the ending didn't have a resolution you could see it as either like matching the way history was ending and was concluded with her or it just wasn't a nice ending because you wanted it to feel a bit more resolved but, i mean directors have spent like seven years writing it so clearly there was a reason and i need to look it up you know I felt a bit unresolved I was I always try and find the answer within try and see if I can like understand it but this one I found quite difficult if you were supposed to like assume what happened you could but obviously it's history so you can't really assume history but also the triangle never happens so who knows I'm hoping that Lady Sarah returned and they continued their little love affair and that we never see Abigail again. I think the Queen died shortly after that incident happened so <sighs> I don't know. I'd like to hear what you guys think about the ending if you thought it was a bit controversial, if you liked it, if it matched the whole style of the film. Get back to me, put it in the comments, I want to see. And I guess that's the end of this video guys. I just felt like I needed to do a little catch up. I had makeup on so I was like might as well do a video and I haven't done one in like three months which is a bit of a sin really. So please give this a like and subscribe if you want to see more review videos. If you prefer more of my other stuff like the vlogs about the conventions and talking about fandoms and stuff then do tell me in the comments because I will make those videos if it's what people want to see. But for now I'm going to keep doing this. You're definitely going to see a Mary Queen of Scots review and you're definitely going to see a Colette review. So do expect that sometime in the future. Can't promise when you're going to. Um, I'll possibly see Mary Queen of Scots in the next two weeks so hopefully that'll be in the next month. For now, take it easy guys, enjoy the start of your new year, I will see you soon so bye guys.